Hey, it's Mike Chen. A while ago, I did a video where I went and tried out and reviewed a lot of all-you-can-eat hot pot restaurants in San Francisco. And after that video came out, a lot of you guys messaged me asking me to do the same thing for New York City. So I thought, go around New York City and eat at a lot of all-you-can-eat hot pot buffets. Let's do it. So we're gonna go to a lot of the all-you-can-eat hot pot places in the city, and we're gonna go try them out. And like before, we're gonna review them based on five things. Meat quality, quantity of ingredients, the sauce bar, the broth, and the service. And we'll rank each of these five criterias from one to five, five of course being the best. And because there are so many all-you-can-eat hot pot places in the city, I don't think one video is going to cover it. So we're going to make it a series. All right, guys, let's go hot potting. Our first stop is 99 Favors here in Flushing. I'm starving. I had a reservation at 8. It's 8.16 and there's still a bunch of people ahead of me. I'm about, to, I'm about to munch on this bamboo. I mean, pandas do it, right? This is actually bigger upstairs than it is downstairs. Thank you. Wow, look how big that table is. Here at the hot pot is $22.99. You get a dollar off if you are a VIP. I don't know what it takes to be a VIP, but a dollar seems a little low. If you want to get Korean barbecue, it's $25.99. If you want to get them together, it's $30.99. And here, you can either get a big family-style pot and have three flavors, three broths, or you can get a big pot with two broths, or you can get your own mini little pot. Here, you don't mark anything on a slip of paper. You just uh, tell your server what you want and she'll put it into the iPad. Now that I pretty much ordered everything on the menu, let's check out the sauce situation. This sauce bar is actually really complete. It has all my favorites, the chive sauce, sesame sauce, Chinese barbecue sauce, and hot oil. Sauce number one. And one really simple, three parts sesame, one part chive sauce. It's soup based testing time and I'm gonna start off with the tomato. Tastes like ketchup. I was really anticipating that because in San Francisco, I had a tomato soup base that tasted really good, but this one really just kind of tastes like ketchup. This looks amazing. This is the pork bone broth. So I'm gonna take a little bit of meat with my broth. The pork bone broth has a lot of porky and herby flavors to it but it is kind of bland. Herbal broth is actually really good. This is my favorite broth so far. It's very herbally. There's definitely some Chinese medicine in here. My favorite is really good. Finally, the spicy broth. <laughs> it's really spicy. Wow. This broth, as you can see, has a lot of stuff in there and it does taste pretty good. This is my, my server here. He's dissecting the shrimp. He must have uh, got an A in science class. All my shrimp has been beheaded and he's deveining the shrimp right now. That's some great table side service. I, of course, opted for both the hot pot and barbecue. I can never resist that. And this is my favorite, fatty beef brisket. And they mixed in some kind of spicy sauce with it as well. Usually I like these just with a little bit of salt and vinegar and, and sesame oil. Huh. That's heavily. Mm. The brisket's nice ratio of lean and fatty meats. Mm. It's not sliced as thin as I would typically like, but the quality of this meat is undeniable. Beautiful char on this brisket and the fat just melts. On this side, this is duck. And whenever I see duck on a barbecue, you gotta get it. Duck is marvelous barbecue. And look at all that beautiful duck fat. Oh. Mm. I love barbecue duck. And my conch is ready. I'm really excited. I love Crunch so much. I love Crunch because of its crunch. Okay, that's stupid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, so good. Not too much seasoning on that. Short ribs. It's not the most tender short rib you'll ever have, but hey, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. It's flavorful enough. All right, guys, I, I feel really bad right now because during this meal time, I I've been neglecting someone. And I feel really bad because, well, I, I love that individual. And for it to, to feel neglected by me, I, I feel horrible. I, I need to make up to it. So let's pay the hot pot some attention. Like I said, really delicious broth. Let's go ahead and add some lamb and add some beef. About 10 seconds in and it's done. Let's try the meat. You are able to tell that is all you can eat hot pot buffet meat. I mean, it's not the most tender beef or lamb, but the meat is sliced really thin. It's able to soak up a lot of the soup, and that soup really adds a lot of heat to the meat. My favorite thing to do, the yotel, the fried dough, that soak up some delicious soup. That's a beautiful bite. This is the cow tongue. A lot of people might not like this, but I love it. It's really lean, really delicious meat. Dip that in my sesame oil and salt. 
Guys, uh, for the first time in a hot pot buffet, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed because look at this. I have a stack of barbecue meat here. I have the plate of barbecue meat I'm working on here. I have my hot pot meat here. I have more barbecue meat here. And I got these delicious seafood items sitting on the grill. I really don't even know what to do with myself right now. I, I, I don't know what to eat. I'm feeling a little flustered. I'm gonna take a deep breath. Let's start eating. I ate so much meat, I feel like if I don't eat these vegetables, something bad's gonna happen. A couple of uh, dessert soups, and this one looks like uh, some kind of icy rice soup with peanuts and some sort of red jelly. Mm. Oh, That's a perfect little post hot pot dessert drink thingy. What I thought was red jelly is actually watermelon. And this thing is so refreshing. And my tongue was kind of burning because of all the spice and the heat. And this thing just perfectly cooled everything down. Mm. This looks like milk tea with some uh, grass jelly in here. And it tastes like milk tea with some grass jelly. Both desserts really refreshing, especially after spicy hot pot. Oh, I tell a thought. Guys, when you come here, you don't need to order any drinks, you don't. Ask for a glass of water, don't ask for an empty cup because that's a little suspicious, and fill it up with a milk tea and jelly. This is a perfect drink with your hot pot. Now I feel kind of stupid. All right, let's talk about this place. 99 Favors, for those of you who don't know, is probably the most recognizable name in all you can eat hot pot in New York City. I believe they have four locations already. I think two in Manhattan, one in Brooklyn, and uh, one in Queens. And it's funny, the reason they call this 96 Flavors, as you saw on the front, that's because every time they register a company, they have to call it something different, so they're just kind of counting down from 99. And if it ever gets down to one favor, they would have already dominated the world. Let's talk about the sauce bar. They have all the sauces I really love, so solid 4.5. When it comes to variety, although the ingredients were presented in a beautiful looking menu with pictures, they don't offer as many items as you would think. For example, no potatoes, uh, no eggs. It only had one type of lamb, one type of beef, and really no dumplings at all. So for variety, I'm gonna give it a three. Of all the broth option they offered, I tried most of them. The spicy and herbal were pretty good. The other ones were either really bland or it tastes like ketchup. So for broth, I give them a 3.5. I'm also gonna give them a 3.5 for meat quality. The meat was sliced really thin. If you cook it really quickly and take it out, it's gonna taste pretty good. But you can definitely tell it's all you can eat hot pot meat and it's a little bit tough. Finally, service. And I think service is where this chain really shines. I mean, the guy dissected a shrimp next to me. Everybody was uber attentive. I asked a lot of questions and they answered it very patiently, even though they were super busy. We did have to wait for about a half an hour, even though we had a reservation. So for that, I give them a 4.5. So that will give them, at least according to me, 19 points and divided by five gives them an average of 3.8. And guys, I do feel after eating at the Brooklyn, the Manhattan, and now the Flushing location, this is a really solid place for hot pot or Korean barbecue, or a combo of Korean barbecue and hot pot. All right guys, on to location number two. probably one of the more unique all-you-can-eat hot pot restaurants in New York and probably the most economical because everything you see behind me all this everything here and all this is included in the buffet for about 12 bucks for lunch and I think $16 for dinner this is an especially good value if you're a vegetarian because just look at all the stuff behind me we got mushrooms woodier more mushrooms yucky stuff something else I really like about this buffet they have some of the most unique noodles I've ever seen in my life I mean look at this stuff fresh pumpkin noodles spinach noodles green tea noodles but this layout here is not just all vegetarian they do have an assortment of fish balls and fish cakes but if you are a meatitarian like me you're gonna want some beef and lamb and you can order them by the plate for about four to six dollars each so i got some fatty beef some non-fatty beef some prime beef some ribeye beef and of course some lamb for soup bases they have dashi some pork bone vegetarian or spicy dashi and spicy pork bone i wanted to try the pork bone but of course i wanted to burn it a little bit so i got the spicy pork bone and i got the regular dashi just to try that soup base out. This is the dashi broth, something very traditional for shabu shabu. There's not a lot of flavor in this broth. 
pretty much tastes like boiling water with a little bit of dashi. And this is the spicy pork bone. That's actually pretty good. The broth is very porky. It doesn't taste very Chinese herby because there really isn't a lot of Chinese herbs in here, but it's got a nice porky flavor. The sauce bar is something that you typically would not see at an all-you-can-eat hot pot place. There are a ton of different sauces here, including pineapple sesame sauce. That sounds interesting. Spicy mustard sauce and wasabi. They do have a already mixed uh, spring so special sauce that I'm gonna try. This is their house sauce. Add some garlic, some wasabi. I don't know what I'm doing here. And let's just try this pineapple sesame sauce. Little garnish. Something I never thought I would ever say at a hot pot buffet. I think there's too much meat on my table. I'm gonna go get some vegetables. By the way, this all counts as veggies. I mean, the pork dumplings got some leek in there and the spinach noodles got spinach. Jackpot. This is definitely the most expensive item on the dinner menu. You don't just eat for taste, you eat for value. The meat looks like it's really good quality. Thinly sliced, nice marbling. Look how pretty that is. We're gonna try the spicy pork bone broth. That's done. That was the non-fatty beef, and it was pretty lean, but at the same time, still pretty tender, and I feel like enough of the soup base got it soaked in there so that the meat tasted pretty good without any sauce. Now let's try the most expensive cut, the ribeye. That cooked in about five seconds. Dip that in a little of the original house sauce. That is really good quality meat. And the sauce is good. It's not as heavy as a typical Mike Chen hot pot sauce. More light, more citrusy. And I think that goes pretty well with the meat. Now this is my sauce with some wasabi in there. Oh. How come I never put wasabi in my hot pot sauce before? That's brilliant. Because it was mixed with sesame sauce, the wasabi didn't really burn. It was like more of a subtle wasabi flavor. And that was delicious. Now I'm gonna show you guys why in Hot Pot, I'm considered a dumper. And because I am here by myself, I can dump as much as I want. Fatty beef with a dashi broth. You can't really taste much of the broth, but what that does to it is it highlights the natural flavor of the ingredient. So if you like something more subtle, something that doesn't mask the flavor of the meats and vegetables, it's basically the opposite of what I like to eat. This would be your broth, but my personal opinion is still that this broth is pretty bland. I love oyster mushrooms. This is where I make my money back. Oh. After about the fifth bite, the wasabi and the sauce is starting to burn. And I'm telling you guys, that's a good burn. Pork dumpling is ready. I like it when I bite into a dumpling and I can chew the meat and the vegetables inside the dumpling. But I feel like this dumpling, the fillings just kind of blended together with the skin. This is what I'm really excited about, the spinach noodles. This counts as a serving of vegetables, right? Oh, all the noodles are good. Here are the green tea noodles. It kind of lost a lot of its green luster after being boiled. And I just want to try some on its own. Pretty good. Just a little bit of matcha flavor. And the ramen, I'm gonna top that off with a little beef. Come to papa. I feel like the noodles, that's really a highlight for this place. I mean, also, it's obviously a strategy to fill you up more, but the noodles are really fresh and delicious. And if you come here during lunch, during the weekdays, it's only 12 bucks, so that's like a bowl of ramen. This is the big chicken dumpling. Mm. Now that's a good dumpling. I can taste the chicken and veggie filling. The filling is a good size. Really good dumpling. All right, mom, if you're watching, I am trying to make this a balanced meal by eating my greens. I do have like five plates of beef on the table, but one leaf of spinach cancels out one slice of beef, right? I mean, that math sounds good to me. And I should know, I'm Asian. I'm good at math, especially food math. I'll give this place props. Their vegetables are really fresh. Okay, I went a little crazy with the sauce. This is pineapple sesame sauce with some chive puree, some spicy mustard, and of course, wasabi. I am very unsure about this. Okay, maybe don't try that. And it got some soft serve ice cream, which is always welcome at the end of a hot pot. Of course, this place being sort of a mix between all you can eat Chinese hot pot and chapu chapu, it's gonna be hard to rate this place like I typically do. For example, a meat quality. I mean, you gotta pay for the meat, so the meat quality is pretty good, but that doesn't really come with a buffet. Also, the service. When you're here, you don't really rely on the servers as your lifeline between your unlimited meats, so that's also hard to say. But let's talk about what we know. First of all, soup base. In my honest opinion, if I was to put this place's broth 
in either categories. It's gonna fall short either way. I feel like the dashi is not nearly as flavorful as some of the shabu shabu places I went to in California. When it comes to the pork bone broth, it was flavorful, but didn't quite add too much to my meats and vegetables. So for broth, I give this place a 2.5. When it comes to variety, especially the non-meat kind, this place, like I mentioned before, is a vegetarian's paradise. Tons of vegetables, tons of noodles, all really fresh. For that, I'm gonna give this place a four. Now let's talk about the sauce bar. It's really made to satisfy both worlds of Chinese hot pot and shabu shabu. And there's a lot of very innovative sauces and spices on that bar that I typically never seen before. And it was really fun to try them all out. So for the sauce bar, I give this place a 4.5. And although I didn't rely on anybody to get my food, the service here is really good. So for that, I'm gonna give them a four. Like I mentioned before, the meat isn't included in the buffet, so we're gonna leave that out. So just based on those four factors, I would give them a total of 15 points divided by four. That's 3.75. And this is why I normally only go to all you can eat hot pot places because here, although my meal wasn't expensive, $16, I did order five plates of meat. And those five plates of meat is gonna cost me $25. So you add it up together, my bill is probably gonna be around $40, much more expensive than if I went to an all you can eat buffet where everything was included. If you are a vegetarian, where you are a vegan and you love hot pot, you cannot beat this deal, especially during lunch on the weekdays. All right guys, on to location number three. Little Lamb is probably the most well-known Chinese hot pot place in America. The Little Lamb places here in New York have what they call a summer special. I think starting in April, they have all you can eat on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And the general perception of Little Lamb hot pot is that their quality is really good, both in terms of soup bases and ingredients. Now, they don't have a lot of selections when you're trying to choose soup. They only have two choices. One is their original, famous, famous milky bone broth. And the other is their milky bone broth that is spicy. And of course, when they offer all you can eat, it's not gonna be everything on their typical menu. They do have a selection here um, that is included in the buffet, which is $22.95. And then a little premium section here for $4 extra for each person at the table. So of course, I gotta add the premium. Like I mentioned before, although there's not a huge selection of uh, hot pot broth at this place, the broth that they do have is really, really famous. They sell this actually at supermarkets and their signature is this very herbally Chinese medicine-y milky bone marrow broth. My mouth is already watering because I know, I know this is good. I know this is good. And just look at all the herbs and ingredients they have in here. Ginger, dates, juju. I could drink that broth on its own. It's really herby, it's nice and thick and creamy, really creamy. And you can tell this thing has been cooked for a long, long time. Let me try the spicy one. Ah. That's delicious. I mean, you can't even compare the broth. The broth here is 100%, hands down, the best of all the places I've ever been to. And just in case you never had hot pot before, these are cooking instructions. There's not a lot of ingredients in terms of the sauce bar, but we'll make do. Some Chinese barbecue sauce, sesame, minced garlic, gotta add some hot oil, a lot of hot oil. Finished with some soy sauce. Mmm, just the way I like it, really red. All right, I got my plum juice, I got my watermelon juice, got my sauce. Mm, tastes good. I'm ready to rock and roll. This is their little fried bun. Oh, I had this before. And you dip this in condensed milk. That's actually really good, salty and sweet. Who says you can't start off with dessert? First round is all meat. This is the triple A lamb. Let's start off with this. Look how, look how thin this is. Beautiful marbling. Let's do the spicy side. It says 10 seconds, but definitely is gonna be less. Probably five seconds. Yep, already done. Oh, oh. It's a slight, slight gamey flavor, but most of that's gonna be chased away by the broth. If you don't want to, you don't really even need to dip it in the sauce. The broth is flavorful enough. And that lamb, man, that's tender. This is the trip away. Let's dip this in the regular broth. Wow, it's good. The New Zealand lamb is definitely more gamey. Both pieces are ridiculously tender. This is the Angus beef, and right away you can tell this is different than regular hot pot um, fatty beefs, because just look at all the marbling. Let me show you. This is a plate of fatty beef. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference, but you see lean meat here, and then you got the fat. But here, 
the marbling, the fat goes all the way through. And that's what's gonna make this uber tender. Oh. Mm. I could right away tell the difference between that cut of meat and almost every other cut of beef I've had at all you can eat hot pot places. Let me show another piece. And the spicy one. Mm. Right away, as soon as you bite down. That meat is just not tough at all. I mean, that meat will lose a fight to a baby. So incredibly gentle and smooth and melty. That's probably why this place only has buffets over the summer because otherwise they go bankrupt. I mean, just by me alone, I'd be here every single day eating that beef. This is the beef soaked in beer. How beautiful. I mean, all the meat coloring is just so pretty. It's like they took a crayon and just colored the meat in before they brought it out. You can smell the beer. Mmm. That beef is really tender with just a slight taste of alcohol. It's actually much better than the wine marinated meat I had on the West Coast. This is the Kubata pork. It's a black pork from Japan. I know this might seem kind of scary because it looks really oily, but I think it's gonna be good. Come here, little piggy. Mm. Mm. Wow, I love the hot oil here. It's actually spicy. Make sure you bib up, trust me. No matter how ridiculous you look, you're gonna be the one laughing at the end when everybody else is covered in splatter. Those of you who don't like spam, I dare you to try it with your hot pot. Delicious. I know it's a mystery meat, but that's a delicious mystery. This is the eggy pork dumpling. It looks beautiful. It's like eating a pork omelet. I'm not really sure what I just ate. Did I just eat a dumpling? Did I just eat an omelet? Did I just have breakfast? Rolled up tofu skin. I need to bring this to my mouth right away. What I love about fried tofu is they soak up all the juice from the broth. Then they soak up the juice from your sauce. Mm. They never get soggy, so they still have like a crunchy texture to them. Then you add some beef to it, just like a sleeping bag. Just, just wrap it up. Mm. It's like I just ate a bunch of tender beef that just went camping. And I just scooped them up in their beautifully delicious tofu sleeping bags. That was a great all-encompassing bite. You got the meat, you got the tofu, you got a little crunch from the tofu, and then you got the soup that sucked inside the tofu. That's like everything I love about hot pot all in one bite. This is my favorite part of a hot pot is the potato. You guys might laugh, you guys might be like, okay, what is it, you like a potato? And you're saying this because you never tried potato in hot pot. Take it out after it's been boiling for a while so it's nice and mushy, dip it in your sauce, and that might be one of the best bite of potato you'll ever have. Another favorite thing of mine is the noodles. When you're almost done with your hot pot, put some noodles into your hot pot and let it soak up all that delicious flavor from the broth and from all the food that you've been tossing inside and out comes this beauty. How lovely that is. Eating noodles at the end of hot pot is, is like an encore. It's like tasting everything you put into the hot pot all over again. It's like Benjamin buttoning yourself. Mm. That didn't even need the spices. I gotta have my Chinese fried dough. Love. Chinese fried dough on hot pot. It's oily, it's messy, got that nice broth in there. This is my hot pot guilty pleasure. I mean, hot pot already is a guilty pleasure. This is my guilty pleasure of my guilty pleasure. All right, we're at a critical juncture of our hot pot meal. We still have a lot of food on the table. I think everybody here is done. This is where I make all my money back. Come to Papa, come to Mikey. It's like herding cattle. That's it, I'm done. <laughs> I have a really weird, um, Reflex, when I'm full, I sneeze non-stop about 10 to, 10 to 12 times. I kid you guys not. That means I sneeze, that means I'm done. I'm really done. Great hot pot experience. And they give you a little yogurt at the end. It's like the best way to top off a hot pot meal with some nice yogurty drink. And check this out. You guys might have laughed at my bit, but look, look what it protected me from. This could have been on my soy sauce shirt. So I could have had like soy sauce and grease on my shirt. Let's talk about this hot pot. I of course opted for the premium hot pot, which is additional $4, bringing my total here today to $26.95. Still not a bad deal for all you can eat. In terms of lamb, the AAA lamb that was on the regular menu and the special New Zealand lamb that was on the premium menu, I didn't feel like those two were really that much different. The New Zealand lamb was even gamier, but I really loved the Angus beef. So I would say shell out the extra four bucks and get the premium items. If you do, I would rate the meat quality here a solid four. The hot pot broth, although there's only two selections, is probably the best hot pot broth here you're gonna find at an all you can eat buffet. So I would give the broth another solid four. When it comes to ingredients, they do have a good selection here. So I would give that a 3.5. The sauce bar itself, it is kind of limited, but with the nice broth, I don't feel like you need as much sauce as other places, but I would still give that a three. And finally, when it comes to service, 
I, I feel like it's gonna be hit or miss. I've been here when the service isn't so good, but today it was spot on. They brought everything we needed. Of course, I was here at four o'clock, so there wasn't a lot of people here, but just today alone, I give the service another four, which totals 18.5 with a 3.7 average. But I do feel this is definitely one of the best tasting all you can eat hot pot buffets in New York City. Definitely the best quality. I wouldn't suggest coming here if they didn't have the buffet because then I feel like you would easily spend over 30, 35 dollars on your portion alone. But with the buffet, 100% hit this place up. Bubble tea must have after some great hot pot. You know what I love about hot pot other than it being ridiculously delicious? Hot pot is one of those meals that everybody loves. You could be a meat lover, a veggie lover, a spice lover, a non-spice lover, a bland water veggie eater. Whatever you like, hot pot has something for you. Hot pot is like the, it's like the UN of food. If hot pot was in charge of the world, there'd be world peace. Okay, maybe not that extreme, but it's for sure a food that brings people together. And that's one of the many reasons I love it. And guys, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is New York. City. There's still a ton of all you can eat hot pot places out there for me to try and I can't wait to get to them all. And guys as always all the places I went to in this video is listed in my description box below. All the scores, all that, that's just my own opinion. You might have something different and that's completely okay. But definitely give these places a try and I would love to know how you like them. And as always thank you all so much for watching this video and until we eat again I'll see you later.